Yeah, happy birthday. Women matters and oh, Christina is coming. In uh, June, in from my place, a very strange June weather. And um, we were talking before in the pre Hi, conversation uh, about that, and we could make a round and ask everyone. So uh, let's do some um, check in. Hanneli, you first to you. Thank you. I'm I'm well. We've our, our weather is a little bit be better. Um, we had very very cold, which caused lots of power outages. So I was I just told Heidi I had a Zoom holiday, which also was really good. The energy is completely different suddenly <laughs> because I was really on much in the last 15 months, and so I'm phone was stolen, and then I had to buy a new phone, and now I could be on Clubhouse. So Christine, yesterday again, I was with your husband in the integral leadership thingy about um, highly sensitive people, and it was really interesting. Um, I didn't, I didn't go onto the stage to share, but I've, it's really wonderful just to sit back and also listen to other people's experiences and their perspectives. And yeah, so I'm like taking it a bit slower than the rhythm of the past fifteen months. Thank you, and I'm passing on to Gertrude. Yeah, I'm living in Germany. Um, and um, at the moment, I'm, I'm really like running after myself. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot on my plate at the moment. Um, so I have um, got a new no um, supervision to to do and maybe there will be a big uh, appreciative inquiry process with the whole company of 40 people so there's a lot to do and i was on different whatever summits <laughs> so there was one after the other and and now i'm done it's it's now summertime and here it's, I mean, June is uh, as hot as August and uh, thunderstorm tonight. And so I'm kind of <laughs> showering twice a day or yeah, trying to, to work during that time. Yeah, and it's good to, to be reconnected because last time I couldn't come. And this is such a beautiful sunflower <laughs> field behind you. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. I pass on to Christine so oh. you can breathe. <laughs> um, I also really love the sunflowers. They're just, that's such a nice, although seeing your home was also very nice. You always have very nice backgrounds very artistic. Um, you know, I really appreciate these check-ins because it makes me realize how much I go day to day, week to week, kind of not paying too much attention uh, to what the bigger picture. So I always kind of come into this check-in and I'm like, well, what am I going to say? I don't know. Obviously, I'm, I stay busy every day. I'm engaged with what I'm doing, but to really kind of describe an arc of what it is that may, maybe is uh, my essence or, or my being is a little bit hard to put into words. Um, have been enjoying catching up on some of the um, uh, integral European conference uh, talks because we can go back and look at them on video. Uh, and that's been interesting to do, uh, trying to get caught up with some of that. Um, doing some reading and spirituality uh, busy working, always trying to figure out how to juggle uh, my time so that I have enough self-care time and enough into, uh, curiosity time to look at other things besides work. Um, 
our oldest daughter uh, today is taking the licensing exam to become a psychologist. So this is one of the last hurdles, or almost the last hurdle, uh, to finishing up her program and then being able to be a licensed psychologist. So we've got our fingers crossed. We'll find out later this afternoon. Um, Amazingly, she can take the test and they score it right away. Obviously, today's technology is good, so she'll know right away uh, whether she passed or not. Um, and she's been studying since November. So if she doesn't pass, I don't know what that says. <laughs> she's well prepared. Um, but that's exciting. Hope, you know, hopefully by, by this evening, we'll have uh, good news from her. So I will pass on to Beatrice. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, everybody. I'm on the road um, 20 minutes from home. So halfway through the call, I'm going to switch to the computer. Um, I was just up in um, Massachusetts uh, for a wedding this weekend. A college friend of mine got married, and it was a hybrid Methodist and Hindu service, which was very interesting. Um, it was mostly the Hindu service, and then there was kind of a smattering of um, pieces of a, of a, you know, Christian ceremony. Um, and so that was a lot of fun to get to see my college friend and to also witness a whole other culture's tradition around, you know, marriage ceremonies and, and all of the different rituals that they do. And it's very interesting. And both sets of parents bless the couple, and there's all these there's rice that's thrown into a fire. There's all kinds of stuff that happens. So very interesting. So it was, it was fun to watch. Um, and I went with my friend Madeline, who's driving right now. Um, I can... <laughs> um, and uh, her family lives nearby. So we actually went to her parents' house before and after. And they live near a pond. And we went canoeing and swimming in the pond and just sat out in the, in the yard. And um, it was very peaceful and beautiful. So um, I really want a pond in my backyard. That's my new life goal um, <laughs> for the future. So uh, it's been a wonderful weekend getting back to life now. As we woke up very early to drive home because Madeline has work this afternoon um, and back in the city, back in city life. So feeling that energetic shift. So that's me. Um, I'll pass to my mother. Well, this is a big energetic shift. Um... <laughs> because I feel like a zombie today. So I apologize in advance if, um, if nothing comes out outright or in for that matter. Um, I'm glad to be back here. It seems like it was a hundred years ago that we last met. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I think I was here the last meeting. So I guess there's just, um, um, I don't really have anything to report except chaos. Um, I don't know how many of you know the, um, about the, the Gabor Mate film that's been making a big buzz. Yeah, I don't know how many of you saw it, The Wisdom of Trauma, but um, did anyone else see it? And there, the, oh. You mean from the conference or? No, it's, oh, has... um, it was made by, um, by Science and Duality. It's a film they worked on for four years. On Duality. Science and non duality. I mean, science and non duality. <laughs> you can, all right, you can see the energy shift problem <laughs> right away. Thank you, Heidi. Um, <laughs> right, science and non duality, exactly. Um, it was it, Gabor Mate is a Hungarian. Um, yeah, and he, he yeah. was in the conference. Yeah. Oh, he was, was in the conference. Okay, yeah. so you know him well. Okay, so this is a film that they that the Benazos have been working on for four years, and this was the culmination. And um, so this this past week was the premiere. So it's making a big. Well, they in the emails I get every day, they you know every day there's a bigger number. You know, five hundred thousand people have written to them. <laughs> you know, seven hundred fifty. That. So um, I guess it's that's why I didn't know if everyone had seen it or not. Um, Do you forward the the link? It's yeah. Well, the problem is I don't know how it's available starting today. I probably shouldn't even have brought it up. Um, they had a week of talks along with it a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago and then 
this past weekend ending yesterday was a was an encore weekend and then i don't know where it is as of today so i'll have to investigate um i mean i can send you if you want to just look it up and find out um that's the fastest it's just oh i'll just type it in but it's just the wisdom of trauma.com they made their own um their own address for it so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just put it in the chat that's that's all i know right now because they keep um They, you know, they, they, they said they're, ha they're not, um, I don't, I'm not even sure if that's right. Um, if that doesn't work, maybe take the, the off. I don't know. Um, I I in, the, in the chat, I put the, um, it works. I see him. Yeah. Okay. That's so the direct link. Yeah. Um, hmm. Anyway, I watched it last night and um, finally I'd been procrastinating and it was um it's a very powerful film it was, it was actually really hard for me to watch it i didn't enjoy it at all um not even remotely um but i'm glad i saw it it was i think it's um i mean i prefer his lectures frankly i didn't think it was a great work of art as a film i'm very critical about films in particular but um but i think he's he's really wonderful and um it's very it, it shows him, you know, in all his various roles. Um, the only person who, who says anything negative about him is his wife, which is very appropriate. <laughs> um, speaking of women matters, I think she has a tough life, but they've been together for, um, I don't know, over 50 years. So she's used to him by now, I hope. Um, but I, I, the only reason I'm reporting about that right off the bat is just that it, it it was really triggering. So I'm now I feel like I'm, I sank another couple thousand meters into my own trauma. Um, thanks to the film. Hi, Christine. So I am curious what you didn't like about it. Well, I wouldn't, are, have we all checked in? I don't think, I don't know. Heidi. I don't, Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. yeah so listen, thank then you. We, yeah. we can take over the topic again. That's okay. Yeah, I can check in. I have uh, two new guests today who drove all the way from Germany and arrived this morning. Mm -hmm. And they are looking for a place where they can go uh, when in Germany, it might be the duty that children get vaccinated and they don't want it at all. And as there is a, a duty also to go to school, and if they combine that, then they will take refugee in another country where they can do homeschooling. And so they come, uh, go around and look for, for places. And so they came this morning. Then I have another couple with um, uh, a camper. They are already here almost a week. And I enjoy to talk to people. And, <laughs> and I sort of neglect a little bit my, my computer stuff, you know. <laughs> My my newsletter went out, but you know it's not with a normal normal eagerness with uh, with which I'm doing these things. So I prefer to be with them. We had I did a meal for everybody today, and it was nice. And yeah, the wisdom of uh, trauma, I I saw that too. And I think it's what we are doing now is re-traumatize a whole generation all over the world without having any direct war and. I find it really horrible instead of, you know, we still had to, to work on the traumas before and now we make sure that the children get traumatized again and it makes bleed my heart, I have to say, really. So, yeah, that's my take on the film <laughs> and on life in many ways. So go ahead, Christine. Yeah, I I went to I went to his uh, keynote, Gabor Mate's keynote at IEC. I found it very depressing. You know, as, as a psychologist, I don't. It wasn't like new to me what he was saying, and uh, he is uh, you know well known in the trauma field. Um, but I found it very depressing, and I was just curious what it was you didn't like about the movie. Was it more you, you didn't like it technically, or how it was composed, or was it did it give you a sense of helplessness or hopelessness, Veronica? I mean, uh, Victoria? It's okay, I feel like Veronica today. <laughs> yeah. 
any name will do today. <laughs> I don't know who I am. Um, I, yeah, I, well, I mean, I could go into a whole lecture about what I didn't like about, but but to, to your point, um, I, I didn't see, I saw his knowledge and I saw his, I mean, I've heard him speak a number of times before. I mean, always online since the pandemic, but um, I've never seen him in person, but yeah, that I would say I came away not, I mean, last night after seeing it with this sense that um, yes, the, the, potentially in the, if you address the trauma and the root causes of the trauma, there can be a sense of wisdom that grows out of, you know, sort of processing the suffering, which is exactly what I'm involved in right now in my own life. Um, but what I, I didn't get any sense from the film of what I didn't, yeah, I didn't get a sense of hope insofar as he, he, all he did was say that we're in the middle of a trauma pandemic. So, um, which he, which I heard the, do you mean, oh, keynote of the conference, he said, yeah, I, I heard the, um, I didn't attend the conference, but I, there was a, in this week of talks, there were live talks that accompanied the sort of the, the, um, the launch of the film. And I heard a couple of those um, before I saw the film actually. And um, in the talks too, you know, he's brilliant. I mean, he had, he did a wonderful, wonderful exchange with Thomas Hubel, which is really, um, which I really enjoyed, but I don't, no one's offering a solution. <laughs> so, so to Heidi's point, um, I think it's, that it's just, to me, it's very disturbing. It was disturbing for me in the first place to find out that there is a kind of trauma pandemic. Um, and it just made me feel that, you know, according to their definition of, of the, you know, the possible root causes, I would say it's pretty much a, you know, something that I think has always been part of the human race. It's just part of being alive and to varying degrees. So I think the people that don't appear to suffer from it either are in denial. I mean, they've, 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 um, you know, they've, it's so hidden that it doesn't affect them or maybe they healed in some amazing way without even knowing they had been in trauma and then healed, you know, like through a really beautiful nurturing relationship or whatever. So I'm not, I'm just, you know, I'm not a psychologist. So I'd love to hear more what you think, Christine and, and all of you. I was, I'm, I'm actually glad that I mentioned that in the check-in. I wasn't intending it to be a topic, but I feel like in the wisdom of this group, it would be interesting to um, to look at that issue because I think it's so, you know, the, I don't know, the, yeah, the film was devastating. I mean, I really, I'm barely functioning this morning because it just, I had the blood curdling nightmares all night last night. I mean, just horrible and so realistic. So I thought, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> you know, is it, am I now, you know, really processing even more because of the film or, or have I hit my limit? So, um, so I'm just, I pass on to whoever wants to talk. Oh, and the other stuff was just, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like a born film critic. So that, that, but that's another subject. So um, it wasn't a bad, it's not badly made. They did a good job, but um, don't you think Heidi? I mean, it was a, you know, it was well done. It was totally slick and professional and um, it's just, I didn't, you know, anyway, that's another subject. So I'm going to let go and let other people more coherent to <laughs> take over. Well, um, certainly if in treating trauma, the, the goal is always to establish resilience. And um, I don't know if he uses that word very much. Maybe he just substitutes wisdom for resilience. Um, but yeah, the idea is you, you don't even necessarily have to relive the trauma um, to deal with it, um, but you do have to know its impact and how you, how you choose or want to uh, be the survivor or resilient or, or the wisdom from that so you can move on from it. Um, it never goes away. But it's uh, it, it's kind of like you know like death in terms of it doesn't the grief doesn't entirely go away you're never you know really out of that world of of missing the person 
um, there's always something there. Uh, so trauma is like that too. It doesn't go away, but there's different stages and, and certainly some ability to, uh, to learn from it. I also, uh, I'm, I guess I'm shifting a little bit, but I don't know if anybody saw Grace and Grit since it came out. It, it's on, uh, well, in the, in the US, it's on Amazon Prime video. Is that where you saw it, Gertrude? No, I didn't see it. I, I just oh. saw the, the, um, the interview in the IEC yeah. uh, with the director and the actor who is playing. Um, yeah. So this is Grace and Grit was one of uh, Ken Wilber's early books about his um, relationship with his wife. And she's diagnosed with breast cancer just days after their marriage, days after their marriage. And they spend their honeymoon uh, in the hospital so she can have her surgery. So it's their journey. Um, and it is kind of it is kind of like a Hollywood film. You know, it was made for commercial enterprise. It's not like a scholarly thing. It, but um, the movie in and of itself was good. Um, I enjoyed it. Tom was a little bit more critical of it, but I enjoyed it because it's a love story. <laughs> so, you know, you can't go wrong with a love story. Right. Um, but uh, the, it doesn't have the entire wisdom or uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't have the depth, certainly, of the book because they've got to keep the arc of the of the love story going. And, and Ken writes so wonderfully uh, in the book, Grace and Grit. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful book. Um, so, of course, they can't really replicate all of that. But uh, it was well done. It, you know, it's pretty captivating. So I would recommend it if any of you are curious. In the in the interview, I thought that the director got it. I mean, that he really got the book and he got the the, the message and Ken and and yeah, and he has another. It's not it's not a integral Ken Wilbur film. It's it it has another purpose, but. But still, when you when you have that hard connection to that, um, so I I'm I'm eager to see it. Um, for me, it was like that's the right person to do it. Both of them, yeah. So I got to know the book more than twenty years ago, and it was a. a I think it was translated in in Italian. I'm not sure, but I gave it to a friend and she was almost on the edge of being suicidal. And she read the book and she said that has saved her life because she uh, didn't think about suicide anymore after that. And I found that really remarkable. And now to the film, Victoria, what I found was uh, when the testimonies came, the cases, when they told their story, I found that very impressive. And many also said that the, knowing that they, that was trauma and not them because they are bad, but because of what uh, they, they lived, especially the scene in the, in the prison, all these men. And when uh, the, 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 the facilitator asked who has been beaten in childhood, one step ahead, and the whole circle went one step ahead, and who has been blah, 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 all these other uh, things, and everybody went one step, step ahead. And so that when they were in interview, they said they never knew that it wasn't them, but that it was caused by, you know, what they have lived. And I imagine that this is a, a good step towards healing and towards resilience and towards maybe from there create a new life except uh, instead of being released from prison and then what do you do without any perspective you know so uh, i found this quite impressive and mm, it didn't do the same thing to me i just found it interesting and uh, yeah horrible all these stories when you hear them but life seems to be 
of them that way and we only didn't know or don't know and so I thought it's good to know my my uh, philosophy about life is better to know what reality is than to even if it's uncomfortable than to close the eyes and that's part of it you know well apropos of that um that, that's one of the things though that I found really disturbing was one of the people they interviewed um said you know it's it's such it's such an awful reality that um oh it was the the woman that that, that has this street ministry in Vancouver the that the large woman um that had, that had worked with uh, Gabor Mate she said she's because she every day she spends on the street um sort of ministering to the well ministering I, I mean I don't know exactly what she does from a practical point of view but she knows all the homeless people and and her her point which was very good is that um the most important thing to do with the homeless is to acknowledge them as human beings that they're no different than we are and not to look away or if so, you know if someone's asking for something not to pretend they don't exist because that only reinforces their sense of you know non-personhood but but she said something that really hit me she said you know i know if i were living the life they have to lead, lead and face the reality they are facing um i would i would be on drugs too <laughs> and i thought well that's the horror you know because the reality is so brutal that um that you know and a lot of them said that actually that the that's what led them to addiction was, you know, just to have a reprieve from from the horrors of, you know, reality. So it's this difficult. Um, and I know from, I mean, personally in my family, there's a situation like that. So I know it firsthand, not firsthand in my own life. <laughs> um, I'm scared to take aspirin, but but um, I have a number of family members with substance abuse and it's, you know, so I've seen it and how it's exactly that they they don't want to face reality, and that's that to me is the tragedy. Like how, because I agree with you, Heidi. I think I think it's better to have your eyes open, because then you know, and that's the only way you can grow. If you escape, then you're always escaping, you know, and it's and then your life is can never really, you're never really embracing life the way it the way it is, but. Um, but yeah, oh, just one thing to get, yeah, what I was going to say wasn't that at all, sorry. Um, <laughs> having a tough morning. Um, it was the prison thing. That was my favorite part of the whole film. But I noticed in the credits that had nothing to do with um, Sand or the Bonazzas or any of it. It was, that's that's its own, the footage and the the whole, that whole scent, that whole part was um, was used by permission. Um, it's, and what, do you remember what the name, it's um, Compassionate, do you remember the name of the of the project? It's amazing. They they did I, that probably was the Benazzas that interviewed the woman that founded it. But it's really fabulous what she's doing, um, because she's she's you know sort of spiritually or psychologically or emotionally whatever rehabilitating these these life people that are in for life life and pris prisoners. And it's so beautiful what she does. And she creates a, it's all about community. And that's why they they meet in in a circle, and then she calls out the like Heidi said, you know how everyone who was beaten or whatever or was insulted or was treated badly or called names or whatever. She has all these different questions, and then they keep moving closer and closer. But it's symbolically it's really beautiful because it shows you know they're coming forward to acknowledge the pain, but in coming forward they're getting closer as a as a group and it's. I just thought that, yeah, I love that part. That was really beautiful. So yeah, that was worth the whole film, but um, but that, yeah, that should be something looked into. And what Christine said um, with the keynote, I, I thought the content was really good, but this was very depressing. There was no, uh, it didn't feel like any way out. And and so I I could imagine that the film is a little bit like that as well. So um, what it got me this keynote was like compassion, really like to to really go deep into compassion, but. Um, 
what is it that they need and what is it that can turn the page and maybe it's it's first to really be with what so so who doesn't wasn't been at the conference and wants to the to watch it i have downloaded it and i can send it to you so are you interested hanely to christine you can access it but victoria or maybe beatrice i could send it to you you are muted, Victoria, if you speak, it seems to be. But you're, 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 I see you're up to the half lip. <laughs> did um, uh, Heidi or Gertrude, did you go to his breakout session? I just heard the keynote. Did yeah, you go I to the was, breakout? Uh, yeah, I was there. And I can send it too. What's that? The, he did a q and A. I mean, a, a, let's say a workshop. And I was there too. The only thing which didn't work out in the whole conference was the workshop of Charles Eisenstein. And I would have loved to download it because I really liked his, um, his talk and also the session, but they said there has something gone wrong. Also from Tom at the beginning, you couldn't download the, um, the, the session. And then I wrote to them and said, there is, uh, it doesn't bring us uh, to the video. And so they said they have fixed it. So who wants to have it? I can send it to you. Hanely, we haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. I'm just sensing into all, when, every, when you all shared, Victoria, Heidi, Christine, and Gertrude, when you were speaking, I just feel all these different energies going on at the moment. And I don't know why, but you remind me of an experience I had with a hardcore crim criminal many, many years ago. I walked into our office at the time on a weekend and it was very deserted, that part of town. And I, went, I needed to go and get a file for a client. And as I came up the stage from the back side of the parking lot into our office park, I saw a man standing in the other, on the other end of the hallway in our reception area. And I could have run, but something in me took over. And I walked straight towards him without knowing who he was, but something else took over. I felt that's how I felt at least. And then I started talking to him for 20 to 40 minutes, apparently. And I was telling, I was asking him, why is he doing what he's doing? Because he was clearly trying to steal stuff, but there was nothing of value there uh, that he could take with him, not much. And it was as if I'm speaking to his higher self, to the, his best self within him, as I'll discuss. But I didn't think these things up, they were just coming and telling him that there's other ways to live and he doesn't need to do this. And he was telling me about his family, all the trauma. And we had a beautiful discussion. And at some stage, I said to him, there's the front door, you can just leave, nobody will know. I won't, I won't tell the soul, it was you, but his fingerprints all over the place. And I turned around and he could have killed me. He could have raped me. Um, I turned gently around and I walked to my office, I took my file, I went down at the back out of my car and I drove home. And my ex-husband at the time said to me, Why, where were you so, for such a long time? And I told him what happened. He said, you, you have to go to the police. And I said, no, I promised him, I won't say a word. He could have killed me for that matter, or raped me at least. And then on Monday morning, I walk into the office and my boss calls me. And I, and I said, what's going on? He said, the police are here to see you. And I said, for what? They said about the break-in on the weekend. And I froze. I, was, I knew they wanted me to tell the story. And I didn't want to also, I sort of promised him I won't say anything. But I didn't know about, I didn't realize the fingerprints would have been all over the place. And he broke into other places as well. And he turned out to be a hardcore, very dangerous man, um, really traumatic background lots and lots of armed robbery, horror, horrific things. And I didn't want to testify against him, but the, but the prosecutor said they would summon me and I have to, you know, 
It was really a very interesting scenario. And then the day of the court case, I was sitting outside, so I still wanted to run away. I didn't want to um, testify against him. And as I had to walk in to the courtroom, he was sitting obviously in the his bench mm. there. And he looked at me and he said to me, I'll kill you. And so for the first time I had access to that part of him, um, to see that part because during the experience, there was nothing of that at all. And I had to ask myself many questions afterwards. How come did he act in the way he did? Was it because I was speaking to that, the good, I don't want to say good or bad part, but that part of him that knew there was something better um, or the life in him, so to speak, the life force within him, whatever you want to call it. What was it that, that caused him not to do anything to me because all the other stories related to him was not so, it was very different. So why am I sharing this with you? Is I've also, in South Africa, we've also got many, many homeless people and lots of crime as everybody knows. And I've also learned to, that when you are in the street and you somebody like that approaches you, if you choose, and I think one of you used the word choose, I don't know whether it was you, Victoria, or you, Christine, but when you choose to connect with that part in them, that is the other option. So when you were speaking about the hope, I really felt in my body that there was no hope. You said it was very depressing, there was no hope. Is that we connected that part in the human being, that hope part. They response to us change as well. And something in them starts happening. And now I feel it in my head as well. It's like, it's how we look at others that has gone through trauma what we project onto them with our own experiences and through our own filters, not that it's good or bad, or right or wrong, but of it's ignites something in them that we get a different response that otherwise wouldn't happen. And I have a felt sense that I've, I myself went through so many traumas in my life, it's unbelievable. And what I also want to share with you is on in, in Clubhouse, I'm shocked by the amount of trauma that people are experiencing, which I verbalized there because it's an open platform for them to verbalize that and to just sense into that and to be there with them. How, what it arises within myself when I'm present with them. And it's people who are, you know, in forums like this, who are expressing deep, deep trauma that they never shared before, especially men, especially men. So it's just showing me that we now in the world have platforms where before the trauma wasn't verbalized or shared. And suddenly it's coming out into the world. So obviously there will be a flood of trauma related experiences coming to the fore that it can become into our awareness of that it's happening. But there is also the other side, that there is hope. There is something that can be done. And thank you, Christine for your wonderful work that you do. I'm complete. Hanemi, I have two questions. One is, how did they know that you met the man so that you were uh, called as a testimony? And the other question no is, what is, what is Clubhouse? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how they knew. I, I, I still can't, I still, I didn't know how they knew. I never asked them. Maybe they found my fingerprints on the, because I was standing with my hands on, there was a there was a barrier between me and him with a reception area. There was a wooden thing, and I was like very relaxing, like this, sitting with there, chatting to him like an old friend. So I don't know. I still I I, I was so shocked at the time. I didn't ask my boss why. Why? Well, how did the police know I was there? Maybe some, maybe some of the security guards in the bill in the office park saw me coming in, because obviously they knew more or less the time that he was there that might have come out. But, but it was incredible how, how it happened. I'm still saying it was the divinely, there was something divine about it in the way I acted because I was so calm and just spoken, speaking to him like another human being. As for Clubhouse, it's this drop-in audio where Tom is doing, I've met Tom through that, not met, but I've been in sessions with Tom has been as well from Integral Leadership and others. Um, and it's, it's a, 
audio, it's like Zoom, but audio, just audio. So you can't see the people. And so it's, it's a different level, a deeper level for me of connection as well in some, in some way. Because you hear the per person's voice without the judgments that you might have had if you've seen them on, you know, on Zoom, for example. Especially because there's so many strangers that you meet in this way. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's I've been I've been, I've only been on it for two weeks, now and then dropping in in certain sessions, and you can create your own rooms and your own clubs, um, with your own themes. And I'm also I'm really curious about the type of themes that people are creating, the stuff that matters to them, and the amount of people that attend some of these sessions. So then you know they you know people need this space to be able to just share. And to speak, and a lot of it is speaking from the heart. Um, so it's a very interesting platform to be on. Yeah, Clubhouse is the platform, and then, and I think this meeting is integral leadership. Is that what it is? Yeah, integral leadership. The only um, downside is you, you need an Apple product mm. to be able to no, access. Not any, it. Long, not any longer. You can use the the later. Um, the later um, Androids you can use as well. Oh, you can. Okay, didn't know that. I've got an Android. I don't. I don't have an Apple. I don't have Apple. No. But you don't. I. But you can't access access it on a computer, right? It's not like a website. You need an app. No, no. You need a phone on. Uh, you, you need, need a phone or. A, yeah, and then you need the invitation app. from somebody. Yeah, and then you need the invitation from somebody who's already on there to be able to join. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Beatrice is at home. She arrived safe. <laughs> Do you want to say something about uh, whatever you want? Well, it seems the topic is trauma, which <laughs> after my very relaxing, <laughs> joyful weekend is a little bit shocking to to jump into um i'm home i'm home it's definitely a different energy here um i yeah it was too short when i was away but i also love it here so it's, it's a weird it's a weird push and pull i love the city but when i leave the city i want to stay away forever and then when i come back i want to stay here for <laughs> um but yeah, the, the pond where we were staying, um, it's only accessible by the people who live around it. So it's kind of a private body of water. And so um, yesterday when we came back from the wedding, we went, we went out and there were only a few people out there and I, I canoed and I was literally by myself in the water and, and watched some geese swimming by and watched a heron sitting on top of a tree and watched him fly away and kind of went into the nooks and crannies of the edges of the pond and looked around and it was totally the only sound I could hear was the wind and bird songs. It was just amazing. Mm. <laughs> and then when I when I went to swimming a little bit I, I floated on my back and my ears went underwater and all sound disappeared. And that is also an amazing experience to just be in pure silence floating in this kind of had patches of cold, but mostly kind of a, a room temperature, lukewarm water. Um, anyway, I'm yearning, <laughs> a little bit yearning for that experience because it was so short and so beautiful. But that's that's what I'm thinking about right now, especially in in contrast and in relation to the topic of trauma and, and heartbreak and pain. Wow, that's it's like pond therapy, right? <laughs> there it is, pond therapy. Everybody, <laughs> everybody could use it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. So we can uh, end the session on a positive note, no? And, uh, uh, go out of the depression and about the horrible reality and find the hope part of which Han Hanili was um, talking, no? or the it's not really the hope part in the person you were addressing, but in you, what is it when you said it came to you? What, what how would you call this this part? Your intuition, or what is that? 
Are you asking me, Heidi? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's my higher knowing, my intuition, my sense of self beyond the wounded parts of myself, if I'm so to speak. Um, but Christine, I just want to mention something about Tom last night. Yes, last night, our time, your time in the morning. But they were speaking about highly sensitive people. And they were talking, it's also trauma related as well on, some, on lots of levels. And I discovered that if I, wherever, when, I, when I listen to stories like that of trauma or watch it in a movie, I also watched a traumatic movie on the weekend. It's also a true story about a young girl who was abducted. And I, when I realized when my awareness, when I have my awareness in my core, so I, I literally put my hand on my belly, that my awareness is there when I'm listening, I don't go into the trauma. So I hear more. And it's because Tom made us do something beautiful, um, us all, he made us um, making a shh sound like you would do for with a baby. Shh. And I realized then, uh, I, I didn't bother, I wasn't on stage, I wasn't sharing in the session. There were too many other people who really had stories to share about, you know, start struggling with that. But when I put my hand on my belly and my witness is in my belly, and I'm present to what everybody else is sharing about trauma or whatever it might be, I'm, I have access to a lot more. So it's simply from dropping my awareness consciously into my belly and then listening and being present with someone, I don't get drawn into the trauma. So if I'm living with somebody else who's gone through trauma, I don't go into their story, but I'm able to just be present with them. And then being present with them kind of sort of raises I would say the vibration or the frequency in the collective. The, it's, the, it's between the sacral and the solar plexus. The navel. The navel, yeah. yeah. It's something happens it, as if, because I'm also very you know, highly sensitive and um, I can easily go into other people's stories. And then I take it all on. So that's why I learned not to take it on, but to just be present with them. And then to listen, because when I listen then and, and being receptive is then on a very different level. So there's something that I'm still exploring as well. There is something to it, especially for people like yourself, Christine, <laughs> because you work with, with this, these type of things every day. I don't. Mm. I was wondering if it would cut, how, if you related to him more from your heart, you know, just the humanity, your humanity and his humanity. And, and to me, that comes from, from your heart and you, you have a big heart. <laughs> I would like to share two things. One is um, from the embodiment conference last year, I got from Peter Levine. Um, he's working with trauma so he is one of the um, big trauma therapists. And he says, whenever I have somebody with PTSD or whatever that might be, when they come to my office, <laughs> they obviously have something like that. Um, he is uh, teaching them a sound uh, that they should practice every day. And I could just do it right now because it's very easy. <laughs> it's a W, O, so it's V, V, and a, and on a low pitch. So it's it's like, yeah, as comfortably you can go as low. So V. and the more relaxed you can do it the better and after a while you fight, feel the vibration in in every cell and and um there is also something like an overtone they when so it becomes a little bit metallic uh, some at some point so just do it several 
times one after the other and and during the day just to have it um, at hand uh, whenever you need it because when you're in <laughs> re-traumatized or when something happens then you might not think of it if you didn't practice it before so that's one more, one of my favorite that I teach almost everybody when I say when you're in red so about the traffic light model so when you're reptilian brain takes over. And two more things, one is just to hold your head, just one front head and the other one in the back. And if you want to do it right now and just for a minute or so. The amygdala, the, 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 the fear center that's in the middle of the brain, that is going off, <laughs> off the road and is not connected anymore if you're in fear or if you're in trauma. And so this is a possibility to, to reconnect the, the fear center with the four, uh, with the frontal lobe which is with, uh, yeah, values and creativity and things like that. Yeah, and the third one is like, uh, you, you put one hand on the other shoulder and go uh, um, just crosswise to, the, to your other hip. So you, you go here all the way down to your hip and the other one, and you can do woo with it, <laughs> like, yeah that's that's one part i just thought um to just to to have another vibration and uh, and the story i want to share is from my two of my ascension meditation teachers they said they they so in former times, when I met them first time 20 years ago, they were uh, either dressed in black, white, or red, the OM um, colors. And so um, one day they were asked to do, um, to teach Ascension, Ishaya's Ascension to somebody in prison. And so they went to Harlem with the Metro and went there and uh, went into that uh, prison to teach that person who was, I think, for life there as well. And uh, on their way from the metro station to the prison, there were a lot of people with knives, with guns, with all kinds of very weird people. And they just went along and said, hello. <laughs> and. And they were greeted back. And uh, so they did what they came for. And then they went back the whole, the, the same way. And, and there were still some of those people there and said, yeah, nice to meet you, bye, or something like that. And, and they had their guns with them, you, you saw it. And, um, and then they came back to their uh, hosts and they, what have you done? I mean, you're crazy. You cannot do that. You you have to take a cab. You you cannot go from the metro station and, and walk there. And and they were like getting a heart attack, what they, they have done. And and then they they realized that they came with an, what they call ahimsa. This ahimsa, this is the Sanskrit word for nonviolence, and it actually means nothing in me wants to harm you. So if you have that attitude, then the other one doesn't have, doesn't go on <laughs> autopilot, doesn't go on, on the, the red stage um, uh, state. So it doesn't go on only adrenaline and being a crocodile. So, so I thought that was a, I, I don't know if I would uh, just do the same because I'm not so sure that I'm so deeply 
uh, in in that ahimsa mode, but uh, that's what they 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 said. Yeah, if nothing in you wants to harm anybody, nobody has to to defend themselves or to to be aggressive towards yourself. So that's my thank you today. I wanted to share with you, you inspired me to share that. Uh, I um, once long time I came across a book, it's called The Yoga of the Sounds. And that's exactly the O, the O, and where, where they sit in the body. And I used the U when I had a menstruation pain and to, to bring the vibrations in the lower part of the body. And who, Beatrice, I think is the only one who still is in this con condition. <laughs> if you need uh, some relief, it, it takes some, you know, some decision to really do it because normally from pain you want to flee. But in this case, you bring the sound and the vibration, especially in this place where you have pain and then the pain after a while is dissolving. So I think sound is still underexplored in its potentiality. Yep. So. Yeah, we can do a, a closing round. You could take this mine as already as a closing round. So I thought it was a nice uh, way from trauma to <laughs> to this uh, opening of how humans can be and uh, address other humans so that they don't have to go back into their modes of dangerous modes, let's say. Thank you. I need to give over. I give over to Beatrice. Um, yeah, this, this last part was really wonderful. I mean, I <laughs> Not to dismiss the first part, but I also was distracted because I was in the car. Um, thank you, Gertrude, for the different um, strategies. Those, those are so important. I think we don't, we do a lot of talking and thinking about these things, especially in this culture, and, and there's very little sharing of physical things you can do or techniques that are actually going to be useful to you in the moment. So, and I think it's a good point to practice them even when you're not in the middle of it because then you then it becomes second nature and then when you are in the middle of it you're ready to go I also have I know some people who have lists that they make of the things that help them and they put them on a wall somewhere or whatever so they know that when they get into a certain mode they just go consult the list and they'll find something to do to help them so um all useful strategies um yeah, I'm <laughs> settling in and probably gonna take a little rest now and get back into my day and dream of the pond until I can return. Um, <laughs> thank you for letting me be in hybrid mode today of partial car and partial home and always wonderful to see all of you. And I look forward to the next, next time. And I'll give over to Christine. Yeah, I enjoyed today's session uh, very much. Everybody uh, shared, everybody had uh, a great contribution. So enjoyed it. Um, I'm going on vacation and will not be here in two weeks, but we'll join you after the next, uh, the next Where session. Where do you go? I'm going to Massachusetts and visiting family and friends and spending a week on Cape Cod where there's lots of ponds and bogs. Hopefully we'll have some of that time together, eat lobster and uh, or lobster, as they say. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll be gone for a number of weeks. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I'm going to look up some of these things that everybody has offered today and a lot of good stuff. So uh, I'm sure I'll be digging into that as well. So thank you, everybody. And I'll turn over to Hanaldi. Thank you, everyone. I can't help but I look at your sunflowers now. Because for me, that's the, that's the sign of happiness and of life and of, yeah, it is something very joyous about sunflowers and your face to the sun. 
which lights us up. So thank you all. Oh, Victoria, you also have. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for being here with you again. I really missed you last time. And lots of love. And I'll pass to Victoria. <laughs> We don't hear you. I don't know what happened here on Zoom. You are unmuted. So we just take your sunflowers for for <laughs> for your check out. I don't know something with the microphone. Your, your have... mic might be. That press that button to mute on the computer. That could be. I see. <laughs> no problem. Show us your sunflowers and we we'll take it for your checkout. <laughs> yeah. And then I give over to, to Gertrud, I guess. <laughs> you do the, the check, check out, uh, check out, out. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit tired, I don't know why, but uh, just, uh, yeah, it's been a long day. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, we we didn't know where to go and it was like uh, just finding our way in and uh, came out very, very well. I was just thinking, I mean, Heidi, you know my, the, the traffic light model, if, I, if that's the right uh, thing to share here. Uh, yeah, I know. Do that. It would be nice if Christine was there too. So not next yeah, time. Yeah, so ne not next time. Yeah. So like to to share what that's uh, yeah, and some more of the stuff I just did. Yeah, wonderful. So thank you, ladies. Have good two weeks with the sunflowers and with art, with every other thing which you like to do with ponds and <laughs> and so on. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.